Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to take a look at how to touch up um, skin with sort of blemishes or cuts or marks or things like that inside of Photoshop. You can see here I've got a photograph of a lovely lady's hand with a ring on it um, and there is a small cut on one of the knuckles which I've been asked to remove. Um, and if I just make this edits folder visible you can see that I have done so. Um, also, I've just done a bit of color correction, things like that. Uh, I'll just zoom out so you can see everything. Um, just give it a bit more of overall warmer tone um, and bring up those colors a little bit. It's really simple to do. Um, so in fact, what I'm going to do is just delete everything that I've done so far and start from scratch. So we've got a normal photograph here. I'm just going to hit Control J to duplicate it. So we're working from a copy so that if we do mess anything up, um, we have still got the original copy here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to brighten up that ring just a little bit and I'm going to dodge that using the dodge tool. So I'm just actually going to, for the sake of making sure this renders quickly and things like that, I'm just going to select the rough area that I need and hit control J to duplicate just that section. So if I hide those other two layers, you can see that I've only got that bit there, which is fine. It's all I need. I'll call this layer ring uh, and I'll just grab the dodge tool which is uh, on the toolbar here. And if you have the burn tool or sponge tool open, uh, what you need to do is just long press on that and then just hover over dodge tool and release. And what the dodge tool does is it just brightens up um, certain parts of the image if you just click and drag over them. So brighten up that gem a little bit and then just roughly sketch out the area of the ring. Now, if you go too far, I'll just show you what happens you start to get some crazy contrasts and artifacting and things like that. So you really don't want to push this that far. Um, a light touch is recommended. So I'll just zoom back out and you can see the difference already with that. Just brings your attention a little bit more towards that ring. Um, the other thing I want to do is fix this cut here uh, just below the ring finger. Uh, and to do that, we'll be using the clone stamp tool. Uh, now, this also requires a light touch and a bit of fiddling, but this is the perfect um, sort of project to start with because it's not a lot of actually heavy replacement. It'll be quite light. So for that, you need the clone stamp tool. If you can't see that, it's because you're on the pattern stamp tool. Um, and all you need to do is basically the way this works is if you hold down Alt with the clone stamp tool selected, you can sample an area. Say, for example, I sample the C over here. When I release Alt, I will have in my brush that specific section that I sampled. So if I were to click on this hand and just drag right, you can see now that I have sort of a crosshairs to the upper left of my brush tool. Uh, that is the area which is being redrawn or sampled. So if I continue to draw, you can see you get some really weird effects. Um, now, the way you want to actually use this is you sample something which is as close as possible to the area that you want to cover up and use that to replace it. So for example, if I go back to our first layer here, select a large area of skin, so you've got quite a bit to work with, like so, and duplicate that. I'll just put it on top and I'll call this cover up. Then I can just remove everything else I know I'm working with just that one section. Okay. Um, on our clone stamp tool, I'll just clone stamp something nearby, which is roughly the same, and move that over our blemish here. Click, and that will uh, activate the brush. You can see now that some of these wrinkles, um, if I just go to a smaller cursor, uh, some of these wrinkles here actually just fade out and stop, which might not look too bad when you're that zoomed out, but when you're zoomed in, you can actually see the, uh, the problem a little bit. Um, so what you in fact want to do is just resample somewhere else and reapply. So I'll resample on this um, wrinkle here and I'll just bring that up and over so it makes it look a little bit more natural. Okay, resample up here maybe, give that a guy, give that a go there, like so. And maybe resample here, try a smaller brush and just replace that there. So if I bring in our background layer and then just flick between on and off on this cover up, you can see that it looks 
not too bad to be honest. Um, there's some bits which are clearly not perfect, like down here, for example. That could be a little bit better if we just sampled that there. Um, and now if we zoom out to the angle at which you're going to be viewing it and look at it again, yeah, not too bad. So let's do the same for this bigger section then. Now this requires a bit more of a lighter hand, but we'll, do, we'll see what we can do. So one thing to take into account when you're doing this is color. Uh, it may not look too different, but if I were to sample up um, here, for example, and go down here, you'll notice that that area of skin, that color is much, much darker than this actual area here, which is why you want to sample from as close as possible and try not to sample from anywhere that you've cloned stamped before. Um, otherwise, it will just start to look a bit blurry and not too composed. So let's try something like this. Just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of doing. But with a bit of luck, you'll get something that looks half decent. Let's see. Perhaps there. Make it look a bit less red. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Let's see what that looks like zoomed out. Okay. Not too bad at all. So there's this little bit here where you can see the shadow here, which either may or may not matter depending on how the light falls. So I think what we need to do is just do the opposite of dodge on this one tiny section here, and that's called a burn. So if I just take this um, dodge tool and turn it to a burn tool, and I'll just turn that exposure down, which is basically like the strength. And see what we get. Yeah, not too bad. OK, that looks pretty good. So we can see now that we've done two things here. We've made the ring a little bit brighter and we've covered up those two um, cuts there on the hand. So the last thing to do then is to add a bit of color correction to the whole image. And to do that, the best thing to do is with an adjustment layer. So that affects everything that is beneath it. So if you click on the um, new sort of effect layer button down here and just choose gradient, this can be whatever you like. Um, I'll set up a new linear gradient. So let's do maybe a nice dark bluish purple, leading its way up into a red. Yeah, actually, that's not too bad like that. Let's try that. Um, let's leave it at 90 degrees angle and let's drop the opacity down to about 20. See what that looks like. Not too bad, probably a touch too much. Let's try 10. Perfect, I think that looks good. Um, the other thing to do then is to just group all of those um, effects into a folder, call them edits, um, and add in a new adjustment layer above that where I'm just gonna play with the curves for a moment. Just to flatten out that image just a little bit. Bring that up. Bring this up a touch more as well. Give it that bit of Instagram fade that people tend to like. Maybe we'll try bring up those darks at the bottom there as well. OK, brilliant. So we'll drop both of those inside of edits. They'll still affect everything that's below it because they're adjustment layers. And we can then flick between the original and the edited version of the photograph. Step one, step two. So we've covered up those um, cuts on the hand there and we've brightened up the ring a little bit and just color corrected the photo to make it look a little bit more dreamy, a bit more hazy, um, which sort of suits the subject matter uh, at hand this time around. And I think that will do. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. This, of course, can be applied to things like um, removing spots and things like that from um, portrait photos. The same principle applies. It's just the clone stamp tool. Find a similar patch of texture, whatever that texture may be, and clone stamp it. It really is as simple as that. So thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. Um, and if you want more of the same, also do more of the same. Thanks very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.